This is Non-Fungible Talkin'. We cover drops, pack breaks, and fun stuff in the world of NFTs. Hey collectors, time for another video. So in this one we're going to go through a Medium article I wrote on NFT utility, a discussion of terminology and validity. So I'm in a lot of discussions about NFTs and a lot of people will talk about utility, but there's no clear definitions of the different types of utility as well as the validity of that utility. So by validity, I mean the likelihood that that utility will actually be delivered. So I'll break it down a bit more. So this doesn't relate to a single NFT project and it is an opinion. So you might have a different opinion, but yeah, I'm just putting mine out there. So for those that don't know, many NFTs have value beyond the hopefully nice looking art or the increase in price that may occur with the markets. So what I've tried to do here is break up the utility into types and the validity of the utility. So we've got various types here. We have art, which is obviously the artwork that you get with the image. You get usage rights, so the ability to monetize your NFT through your own activities. So that might be selling merchandise, sub-licensing your NFT to a third party, which we've seen with Ford Ape Yacht Club, and generally the ability of you to monetize your NFT more broadly. So with most, if not all, of the licensed NFTs I've seen, the usage rights are quite limited in what you can do. Now the type is access, so you might get access to an environment, a game, an experience, either physical or digital, or additional drops. So some examples there, you might get access to a metaverse or a game which allows you to play to earn. You might get access to a physical event or a digital event and also additional drops of NFTs. Another type, you might get financial rewards. So for example, you might get royalties off the use of an NFT. So land is one of those types of things. So certain land will give you rewards if people are using the land or going through your land. Other ones might be if they tokenize their music and you might get a fraction of the rewards a creator gets in maybe streaming or selling the asset on an ongoing basis. In relation to land, from what I've seen, these are usually paid in an altcoin, so a coin developed for the specific project. Digital rewards, holding an NFT for more digital goods, so this might be software, other NFTs, so for example, you might get challenges and you get other NFTs dropped to you. You might get custom art. I've seen a few of those. So you might get physical custom art or digital custom art. And these may or may not be able to be on sold. So you might be able to sell the reward that you get on an open market. Physical rewards, pretty self-explanatory. Holding an NFT and you can redeem them for a physical item. Sometimes these will be ongoing, other times it'll be one-off and you'll essentially burn the NFT. One thing to take note of, if you are getting NFTs that are redeemable, be sure that you're careful in ensuring that the NFT that you're going to buy, if it is redeemable in nature, has the metadata updated because some marketplaces are slow at updating their metadata and you might find that the NFT that you're looking to buy has already been redeemed and that means you can't redeem it again. Community type, so this is access to a Discord community, special access to founders and other holders or a right of audience. So a couple of examples here, influencers, a bunch of those have given access to their communities and it might be a course that they're selling it could be joining them in a webinar. And I've seen other ones where if you get a certain NFT, you get a right to talk on their Discord. Whereas cheaper ones just allow you to view their Discord, for example. Goods in kind might be redeemable experiences or goods by owning an NFT. So these are more talking about physical things. Overall, the reason why you may want one or multiple of these utilities is pretty much based on the validity of these actually coming true. So I'll explain a bit more what I mean around that. So some NFTs will have no utility. There's no real conversation about validity because they've stated that they're not giving any value. So you just get the art, for example. It's still possible to have artificial utility, which I'll talk to now. 
So artificial utility is where a community actually creates the utility and not the team. So this is, for example, a set list of people that own a particular collectible will get together and then they create their own community and their own value by holding that NFT. That's one thing I've seen with a few licensed groups is that they actually will do that. So you might have the Todd Batman group, the Superman group, the Walt statue group, for example, in the VV world. There have been different communities that have sprung up and effectively created artificial utility there. So other types of utility validity we have is alluded. So this is where connections made by the NFT team that may or may not occur. So unofficial statements made by an identified team member, such as a Discord mod, or a team member in a Ask Me Anything or AMA. Speculative utility. So the community draws links that are unsupported by released information. They may occur in the future, but they can't be relied on as being factual. In many cases, teams won't debunk these because they're getting a benefit from a potential bump in a value based on speculation being in the air. Wildly speculative utility where community members state utility that is an unreasonable linkage based on the available information. False utility, where a community member states utility they know to be false or has been debunked by the team. So not saying at all that by them putting out false utility, they're trying to get a gain from that, but effectively it's what the community feels is false. Artificial utility we've already talked about. Fleeting utility, where you get a time-sensitive benefit. This has been a real problem in a few licensed collectibles of late where the value of the NFT drops significantly after those time sensitive benefits have elapsed. So it might be airdrops, challenges, redeemables, or a set number of live events. Planned utility where it's stated by the team but doesn't have a time frame yet, and scheduled utility where it has a time frame. An ongoing, which is utility that exists, is working and is understood to be a perpetual utility, such as royalties for holding a certain NFT. So you might see things like ongoing utility being great and you know the, the highest validity of utility. However, there is no guarantees that these things will go on forever. It's really just making a judgment based on the available information and where it fits within these particular categories. Again, it's just personal opinion, but we'll get to a workflow in a minute to show you how to determine what type of validity a current utility has. So in relation to utility and its associated validity, one must look at what value they ascribe to the utility being proposed. An NFT that provides fleeting, artificial, alluded or speculative, wildly speculative or false utility poses a greater risk long term than does the other types. So fleeting is you get a value that isn't long term. Artificial is the community gets together and does something and the other ones are pretty self-explanatory. That said, nearly all utility isn't based on a legal contract and is more of a social contract between the various parties. I'm not at all a lawyer here, so don't take this as a legal stance. Everything I'm saying here is purely an opinion. Smart contracts may also be part of the equation, however, one must be aware of how a team or third party may externally impact the value of these smart contracts. So there was an example recently where a person owned a certain crypto token. The liquidity had been moved to a new collection and effectively shutting out the old owners of that. That wasn't in relation to an NFT specifically, but it was related to tokens. Assessing the utility value of a project can be difficult depending on the types of utility that exist. As such, a process such as a blow could be applied to any potential utility to identify its validity. So essentially it asks the following questions. Who stated the utility will exist? Have all parties needed to make it exist provided public statements? When will it exist? Are there artifacts that show the reality of the utility? So examples or demos. Has it been delivered and for how long will it exist? So I'll zoom in here. So we start at the top here and we ask a basic question. Is a utility available? Yes, it is. Is it time sensitive? If it is, it's fleeting. If it's not time sensitive, it's ongoing. If it's not yet available, who stated that it will exist? If it's a community member, are they delivering the utility? If it is, then it's artificial utility. If they're not delivering the utility, is it reasonable to think the statement is accurate? 
If it is, then it's speculative. If it's not reasonable, has the utility been debunked by the team? If it has, then it's false. If it hasn't, then it's wildly speculative. So effectively, has some common sense been applied to what's being said? And where does it then sit? So going down from here, who stated the utility the team did? Was the statement made in an official channel? So was it purely an AMA or was it you know, a tweet or something like that? Uh, if it wasn't, then it's alluded. So it's something where they're saying it's possible for future things. Have all relevant parties stated they will deliver the utility? If they haven't, then it's still alluded. So if a key partner that actually needs to do it hasn't actually stated as well, then it's still alluded. Is there a date? So this is where all parties have said, yes, we're going to deliver it. Is there a date? No, there's not. It's planned. If there is, then it's scheduled. So all these are pretty straightforward, but I thought it was important to put them down. So there's something to work through to get some understanding of what we're actually talking about when we're talking utility because it does seem to be very confused in nature. So hopefully the above workflow has provided enough information to attempt to assess any utility that's posed and how to navigate its potential validity. The biggest issue in the model above is that in many cases teams have good intentions and then due to market forces or their own internal issues they have to change the rules. So Something that might have been ongoing for a while, such as staking, for example, might go away and you need to reevaluate based on that. For example, time frames and deliverables. So even if you have the gold standard of validity, that being ongoing utility, things might change. This is really unfortunate and something you must be prepared for in this space. None of the above should be relied on for your decision making, but possibly might help you discriminate as to what utility is beneficial in a project you're part of. So, for example, if a community member says something, you can then flow through, okay, actually assessing whether there's more information that goes with it. Or if a team member, say a Discord mod says something, where does it sit? Like, is it actually going to come true or is it not yet available? The other thing too is if something is currently sitting in a particular box, so say it's currently alluded and more information comes in, then you would reassess it and you go, okay, it's now planned or it's now scheduled or whatever else. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, whether this is something that might be useful going forward. I just hadn't heard of anyone come up with an attempt to give some terminology to different types of utility and I thought it would be good to get something down on paper. So again, these are just my thoughts but I would be interested to hear yours as well. Anyway, that's all for this video. Please subscribe and we'll catch you next time.